I know egg laying in chameleons can be an intimidating topic and can be scary for new keepers. So I'm gonna do my very best to give you guys all the information that you need to feel comfortable and confident to get your female through the egg laying process. I already know this is gonna be a crazy long video, so take advantage of the timestamps down below. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So this has been a highly requested video and a video that I've been really wanting to make. I was hesitant to make it because I've never actually gone through the egg laying process with my female persons. She just hasn't laid eggs yet. It's not something that I've personally had to go through. So I was like, I don't want to make a video if I can't speak to it from personal experience. But I have coached and mentored hundreds of chameleons through the egg laying process or their owners through the egg laying process. I've read hundreds of articles and threads. I've read scientific papers. I've listened to podcast episodes. Like I know a lot about the egg laying process. I talk to breeders, I talk to keepers. And what I've done is I tried to compile the answers of the most commonly asked questions that you guys have with regards to egg laying. So I just wanted to put the caveat on there that I have not experienced this personally, but I know a lot and I have a lot of other people's experiences that I can share with you guys that hopefully will make you confident in the egg laying process. So the first thing to learn or the first question to ask is, do you have a female chameleon? If the pet store employee told you have a male or you have a female, do not take their word for it. I have heard way too many times of people being told the wrong gender and sex of their chameleon and as a result have ended up with egg bound females. So I'm going to tell you right now. There are three commonly kept species of chameleon in like the reptile hobby. Panther chameleon, field chameleon, and Jackson's chameleon. There are obviously other species, but we're gonna focus primarily on those. We're gonna knock off Jackson's chameleon for this video because Jackson chameleons actually are live bearers. So you do not need to deal with the egg laying process because they don't lay eggs. So we're really gonna talk about veiled and panther chameleons. It can be challenging to sex both of these at a young age, but once you're chameleon is receptive and able to produce eggs, you should very, very easily be able to identify if you have a male or a female. With a veiled chameleon, a female chameleon is going to have a smaller cask than a male. They're going to have different coloration. Um, the back feet usually don't have a bump or what's called a tarsal spur. The males do, the females typically don't. But the biggest way to tell is from coloration. And the way that I do it is Male veiled have bars or big thick lines of color on their bodies. Female veiled chameleons do not have this coloration. Same thing goes with a panther chameleon. They're very difficult to sex as babies, but once they've reached sexual maturity, a male panther chameleon is going to be your bright rainbow colors. This is gonna be blues, greens, purples, reds, yellows. That's gonna be a male chameleon. That's what Neptune is. A female panther chameleon is typically in the peachy purple family. And so that's how you can tell females are also smaller, but like that's hard to tell if you don't have two chameleons to like compare sizes. Fields and panthers are oviparous, which means they are egg laying. Your female chameleon will lay eggs even if she's never been with or never seen a male chameleon. They will just be infertile eggs. Very similar to how chickens will lay infertile eggs. So what we need to do is make sure she has a place to lay those and then the cycle will repeat itself. If your female has been in the same enclosure as a male, then odds are they are fertile eggs and that's a whole different process. But for the sake of this video, yes, your female can lay eggs even without um, being with a male. And no, you're not gonna have a bajillion baby commands because odds are they're infertile. Before we get into the process of how to set up a laying bin and that whole thing, I just briefly wanna talk about what egg bound means and the reason why it's so important that we do have a lane bin for our chameleons. So what will happen is your chameleon will develop these eggs. If they don't have anywhere to deposit the eggs or lay them, right, get rid of them, then they'll become egg bound, which is when they just hold on to the eggs and then the eggs just start rotting inside, really, is what happens. And it they will die from it. It's probably the most preventable cause of death, um, right behind metabolic bone disease, but probably the number one cause of death for a female chameleon. A lot of people are like so nonchalant, I'm like, oh yeah, my female got egg bound and died. Like this is totally preventable. If you have on point husbandry care and you have an on point laying bin, 
your, your chameleon should have no issues laying eggs. It's really not a difficult process. It's only problematic because people don't realize they have females or they have a sick chameleon trying to lay eggs or they don't even give her somewhere to lay her eggs. There are also pre-ovulatory and post-ovulatory conditions that can happen like egg binding or things happening with the follicles. Point being is if you have your chameleon healthy with a properly set up laying bin, then she shouldn't have any issues. There are a few ways to know that your chameleon is getting ready to lay eggs. The biggest one is just age. As your chameleon gets older, she's reaching sexual maturity and she's getting ready to start developing and lay those eggs. This typically happens around five to six months, but it varies from chameleon to chameleon. If you're not sure how old your chameleon is, just get a laying bin in there sooner than later. There's no disadvantage to having a baby chameleon with a laying bin. The most obvious way to tell if your chameleon's getting ready to lay eggs is by their colors. So we know chameleons change colors, we know they change colors to communicate, so females change colors to communicate with males whether or not they're receptive or gravid or pregnant. So if they're receptive, then that means they're starting to develop those eggs and they're like, hey Mr. Male, like come meet with me and then we can have all these cute baby chameleons. That's gonna be a different coloration than her normal resting colors. Once she has eggs, then she's gravid or pregnant, and then that's her telling the males, hey males, stay away, I already have eggs, I'm not available to be mated with. So you kind of have to see the transition of the coloration in your chameleon from their resting, like normal colors, their receptive colors, their gravid colors, and then they should go back to their normal resting colors. It's going to vary from a veiled chameleon to a panther chameleon, so I will put pictures on the screen of a gravid panther chameleon, so then you guys can know and kind of can match your chameleon to these colors. Another way you can tell is with their appetite. Some chameleons will eat less right before they're getting ready to lay, some chameleons will eat more, or they'll drink more, or they'll bask more, but you're looking for a change in behavior. Additionally, your female chameleon could be climbing around a lot and especially climbing down to the bottom. She's looking for somewhere to lay her eggs. So if she's becoming more active, eating less, eating more, change in behavior, that's a sign. Another really obvious one is if she looks bigger. If she's got a large belly, odds are that's full of eggs. And lastly, if you're able to handle your chameleon without causing too much stress, then you can weigh them on a regular basis so then you can know what their normal weight is and if she's starting to gain weight, then that can be a sign that she's getting ready to produce eggs and is starting to get ready to lay. Keep in mind that she could be starting to show signs of being receptive and gravid or change in appetite, all that, but then it could still be a few weeks before she actually lays her eggs. So these are just early signs to look out for. Before your female lays her eggs, there are three things you need to do. Set up a laying bin, which I'll get into the nitty gritty details of that. Make sure she has the proper UVB, just to make sure you have the right one. You want a T5 high output linear UVB. I'm going to recommend a 5.0 Reptisun or a 6% Arcadia. A compact UVB does not count. A T8 UVB does not count. What you need is exactly what I said, T5, 5.0 or 6% UVB. Additionally, you need to make sure that your supplement schedule is on point. You should be primarily using calcium without D3 on nearly every feeding, and then you should be adding in a multivitamin and calcium with D3 approximately two times a month, depending on the age of your chameleon. I have videos about both these things, so I will link those up above and in the description box below. The reason for this is if your chameleon has improper lights and improper supplements, she will not be able to form eggs. Because what happens, or she'll get sick because of it, and let me explain a little bit. What happens is your chameleon needs to form this hard shell on the outside of the egg. This is made from calcium. If your chameleon is not healthy and doesn't have the proper UVB in supplements, what's gonna end up happening is her body's gonna start pulling the calcium from her bones in order to form those shells. This is going to result in metabolic bone disease, which can also be fatal. Not to mention, a sick chameleon is going to have a much harder time laying eggs than a healthy chameleon. So this is something that needs to be perfect. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You have to have the correct UVB in supplements. Okay. So you have the right lights, 
you have the right supplements, you know she's female, she's showing signs, she's getting ready to be gravid. So what you're going to do is put a laying bin inside her enclosure. So this is what happens in the wild. A chameleon is chilling in the tree, she meets with a male, she has her eggs all ready to go. What she's going to do is climb down to the bottom of the forest, wherever she's living. She's going to dig a hole, then she's going to turn around, stick her butt down to the hole, lay her eggs, and then she's going to cover them back up and then climb up her tree. Then those eggs are gonna hatch out and the little baby chameleons are gonna run off and do their chameleon thing. So we're basically trying to simulate this for our chameleon. The reason why we need a lane bin is because most of us keep our enclosures pretty bare. It's not like we have inches of soil for our chameleon to climb down and bury her eggs. So we need to give her something that simulates that for her in captivity. Some suggestions for containers that would work would be a plastic bin the size of a shoebox, big circular planters, a sterilite tub, a five gallon bucket. What you're really looking for is a container that's 10 to 12 inches long and 12 to 10 inches wide that you can put at least six inches of soil in. So if it can be like at least eight, in, eight to 10 inches deep so then you can put that soil in there, that would be great. And it would be even better if the plastic is not see-through, if it's opaque, so then you can't see through it. What you don't want is to use something like a teeny tiny sour cream container. I once saw someone who used a cottage cheese container. It obviously did not work, because how is your chameleon supposed to dig a hole, stick her butt down in there, and lay eggs in something this small? It, it's not gonna work. The tiny, the tiny plant that you have in your enclosure that's this big, is not going to work. She needs to dig a tunnel, dig a hole, and lay her eggs in there and cover it back up. So it needs to be this size. And this is why people recommend larger enclosures for females so then you can add in the laying bin inside of it. So once you have your bin, you're going to fill it with washed play sand. This is something that you can pick up from Home Depot or Lowe's or really any garden center. You're just looking for washed play sand. Alternatively, what some people do is they use washed play sand they do 50% of that and then they do 50% organic potting soil and do a nice mixture of the two. Plenty of breeders and plenty of keepers have had success with both. The most common recommendation right now is to use wash play sand. You want to make sure that there's at least six inches of um, substrate, whatever you end up using. And then you want to make sure that it's moist enough that it can hold its shape. So what you can do is poke a finger in there and kind of like dig a little hole and make sure that it holds its shape. The reason for this is you don't want your chameleon to start digging and then the hole collapse on her because it's too dry. Alternatively, you don't want it too moist, so then it's a, a sopping mess. So you want to find the right consistency and the right moisture level in order for it to hold its shape if you were to dig into it. One thing to note is that chameleons dig diagonally, so make sure it can hold its shape. That way, if you're worried about drainage in the container, feel free to drill some holes in the bottom so that can help drain some of the excess water. Some people like to dig some tester holes for their chameleon. This is not necessary, just something some breeders do that I want to share with you guys. Make sure you have a plant or a stick or some way for your chameleon to climb in and out of the bin. It's not helpful if you have this plastic tub and no way for her to get in there. So make sure you do that. A great thing that you could do is put in a live plant that has a nice root ball in it because females actually love to lay their eggs against something. So this would actually be a really great thing that you could do. I'm going to recommend that you leave the bin in the enclosure permanently. This way you don't run the risk of missing your chameleon showing signs of being gravid. And if she is showing signs of gravids, then you could just make sure that the sand is the appropriate texture so then she can dig her holes. Now you have the lane bin inside her enclosure ready to go. We're going to talk about what to do and what to expect when she lays eggs. So the number one tip I have for you is to give her privacy. Chameleons are shy creatures, just in general, but especially females when they're laying their eggs. So we need to leave them undisturbed. I know you're gonna be tempted to watch them and make sure they're okay, but you really just need to give them privacy. The reason for this is, is because you, if you disturb your chameleon while she's in the middle of laying her eggs, she could decide to abandon her hole and then hold on to some eggs. So she laid some, but not all of them, or maybe she didn't lay, lay any of them. Now she's going to get sick because of those eggs being stuck in there and then you're gonna be in trouble. So give her privacy. What some keepers do will take a sheet and wrap the enclosure with it, but make sure there's some bottom left over so that there's airflow. We don't wanna create like a hot box for your chameleon. You can also poke like little holes in the sheet so then you can keep an eye on your chameleon while still giving her privacy. Chameleons will sometimes 
make test holes until they find the one that they like and then they'll stick with that one. Once she starts laying, it can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days, but the typical time frame is 6 to 12 hours. Again, this is just a rough estimate based off of talking to breeders and other keepers, but let her do her thing. If she it's nighttime and she's digging through the night, then just turn off her lights like you normally would. She may decide to dig through the night or she may sleep in her hole. Again, just leave her be. There's no need to offer them food while they're digging. Again, we want to leave them undisturbed. If you have automatic misters, go ahead, let them go off like you normally would. If you usually miss by hand and you're giving your chameleon privacy but still want to offer her hydration, go ahead and use a dripper or put some ice cubes on top of the enclosure to drip down. Or you can just spray the upper part of the enclosure and leave your chameleon undisturbed in the bottom half. The ways to know that your chameleon has finished laying eggs is one, she's no longer at the bottom. Two, she looks skinnier. And three, she probably has some dirt or sand on her nose. If you see those three signs, then odds are your chameleon has laid her eggs. Woohoo! Congratulations! Once she's done successfully laying, go ahead and offer her calcium supplemented and properly gut loaded bugs. It's okay to give her a few extra. She just worked really hard. You also want to give her a long misting session, let her rehydrate, and then you'll want to retrieve the eggs. If you were a little bit strategic beforehand, you could have placed maybe a different color soil or sand on top of um, the lane bin so then you could tell if it was undisturbed, but no biggie, just dig around, see if you can find the eggs. You'll want to count and keep track of how many eggs that she laid so then you can know if it's a good clutch size, if it's too many, and then you can make adjustments as needed. If they are infertile eggs, then you can go ahead and toss them. That, I mean, that's fine, totally fine, just throw them away. If they are fertile eggs, then you'll need to move them into an incubator. This is not a video on how to breed chameleons. It's just a video all about the egg laying process, so please check out other resources if that's what you're interested in. And lastly, you'll want to reset up the laying bin, get it all good to go, make sure the moisture levels are good, and get ready for the next round. Females will typically lay every four-ish months, but there's things that you can do to help them not lay so often and not lay so many eggs, but that's the average amount, and we'll talk about different techniques on how to get your female to lay less. We want to prevent our chameleon from laying large clutch sizes. This is going to cause strain and extra stress on your chameleon's body. Imagine them laying five eggs versus 50 eggs, like that is a lot of eggs that your poor little chameleon has to try and make and then pop out. So if we can do things to help decrease the number of eggs that they're going to lay and help them lay less often, the thought process is hopefully they will live longer, happier lives as a result. So there's two contributing factors to a chameleon laying a lot of eggs or not a lot of eggs, like two things that influence clutch sizes that we've figured out so far. That's gonna be temperatures and the amount of food. Chameleons that are kept at higher temperatures will lay more eggs than chameleons that are kept at lower temperatures. So the basking temperatures for a female veiled or panther chameleon that you want to aim for is the high 70s, around 75, no hotter than 80 degrees Fahrenheit would be ideal. Lots of keepers have had great success on decreasing their clutch sizes with these temperatures while still having a healthy chameleon. And the second thing is the amount of food that you're feeding your chameleon. So the recommended amount for an adult female chameleon is going to be three to four bugs every two to three days. And it's going to depend on the size of the feeder, but like medium sized bugs like roaches or crickets, that sort of thing. Point being, don't feed them every day, feed them every two to three days. Females in particular are food goblins and will definitely eat more if you offer it to them, but just because they're eating it doesn't mean it's healthy for them, and just because they're eating that doesn't mean they're hungry. So please stick to smaller quantities less frequently to try and produce less eggs for your chameleon. 20 to 30 eggs is within a normal clutch size. 30 to 50 eggs would be considered a lot of eggs, and anything over 50 eggs in one clutch is considered a lot of eggs and you should definitely make some changes to help decrease that number. Additionally, some breeders have said that if their female chameleons see a male chameleon, that can like jumpstart them producing eggs. So avoid having your female see any male chameleons and that could help as well. I want to be realistic that things can go wrong and this is the number one cause of death in female chameleons. So some things that could happen, 
is that your chameleon has had improper care and she has metabolic bone disease and as a result is too sick and too weak to lay her eggs. My advice to you is to see a vet. Another scenario is your chameleon was gravid and you didn't realize or you didn't know you had a female and you offered the laying bin too late and now she's egg bound and unable to lay her eggs. My advice to you is to see a vet. Another scenario is that your chameleon lays some of her eggs but not all of her eggs so she still has some inside. My advice to you is to see a vet. The last scenario I want to talk about is the phantom laying which is when your chameleon goes down, digs a hole, pretends that she's laying her eggs, but doesn't actually, covers it back up and doesn't lay her eggs and as a result still has them inside her. My advice to you is to see a vet. I know that's not super helpful if that's something you're experiencing right now, but honestly that's the best advice I can give you. They're the only person who can save a chameleon who's that sick with that many eggs is going to be a trusted chameleon vet. Sometimes it's too late, sometimes they pull through. I am rooting for your chameleon, I really, really am, but there's only so much I can do as a person on the internet and there's only so much you can do as a chameleon keeper and sometimes it's worth the five hour drive and a couple hundred dollar vet bill to save your chameleon's life. I know this is a lot of information that I threw at you, but hopefully this is able to answer some of your common questions that you have in regards to egg laying. If you have a female chameleon and you have any advice for new keepers on egg laying, things that you've learned, things that have worked for you, please, please, please let me know down in the comments and then people can read them and check them out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video and you can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on Instagram at Neptune the Chameleon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye. Male chameleons, male, or er, ah, uh, wrong word. This is a hard video to make. Process, I quickly want to talk, talk, Woo! wow. A good way to figure out, to try and find, oh, why can't I talk? I hope this video can save some chameleon lives because that's why I do this. Really, just I just want to save chameleon lives and those females out there, you know, they deserve a fighting chance.